Hi everyone, it's Dr. Toker. We are sitting here in consult corner and we are going to go over what is a colonoscopy, how is it done, and what could possibly go wrong. A colonoscopy is a test where we use high definition fiber optic equipment to look through your colon looking for any disease process that may occur. There are a variety of reasons that we do this on sick patients looking for reasons for a disease symptom and in well patients looking for precancerous polyps or colon cancer. What is involved? Well, it is a two-step process. Step one is you at home going on a clear liquid diet followed by drinking a bowel prep. So essentially you're hungry and you're pooping. <laughs> And the second step is the next day when you come in, we start an IV, we get you drunk and silly, and we go looking through your colon. So step one, hungry pooping. Step two, drunk and silly. The bowel prep I will explain in a separate video. As for the procedure itself, we like to have patients on an empty stomach after a clear liquid diet for four hours when you come into the hospital. We will start an IV and have you sign a series of uh, informed consents. You'll meet me. You will meet an anesthesiologist. We start medicine through the IV to begin something called conscious sedation. And most of the medicines that we use uh, are very short acting, mostly propofol. Sometimes we'll use fentanyl and sometimes we'll use Versed. And this combination gets you into a sleepy state so that you are unaware of my presence but that you wake up rather quick from. The complications of that type of sedation is extremely uncommon, especially in a healthy patient who has no underlying medical diseases. Some patients may have chronic medical illnesses and we may have to alter a little bit of what we do. Uh, but as a general rule, this sedation is felt to be so safe that there's very few patients that we do not do this procedure for so uh, one of the reasons I like to make, meet patients, whether virtually or in person, prior to a colonoscopy is to make sure you're not one of those rare people who cannot uh, undergo this type of conscious sedation. Once the IV is started and you've signed your consents, we get you drunk and silly, so to speak. And the procedure itself is done with a high definition fiber optic camera. You don't really need to know the details of that, <laughs> except to say that it's a very long camera. Uh, the average colon is six feet in length, and so we have a camera that's more than six feet long, and we want to see the entire colon all the way to where the colon and the small intestines meet. Once we get to the end of the colon, we take pictures of everything that is abnormal, and we will take one or two reasonably normal pictures. So in other words, I will take a picture of the opening of the appendix um, or where the small intestine enter into the colon, just to document that we got to the end of the colon. A very common finding is something called diverticulosis. Half of the population has this. We will typically take a picture of that if it's significant. And then sometimes I'll take pictures of hemorrhoids, especially in someone who has a hemorrhoidal complaint, just so you kind of know what the enemy looks like. What we are really looking for are precancerous polyps. They occur in 30% of the population. When we see those, it's not just enough to take a picture. We take our picture so you can see what we're talking about. And then we remove that object and send it to a pathologist. So 30% of the population will have one of these polyps. About one person in 200 will have such a large polyp that it cannot come out through a colonoscope. In fact, some of those patients will have cancer. Uh, that cannot come out through a colonoscope. But we can do biopsies. We can mark those areas with something called a tattoo. And a tattoo helps guide me during robotic surgery so I know exactly the area that we're talking about that needs our attention. Okay, so all biopsies go over to a pathologist. That pathology report can take a couple of weeks. Good news travels extremely slow. Bad news travels extremely quickly. So uh, if I tell you at the time of your colonoscopy that was a really small polyp, don't worry, and you don't hear anything for a week or two, that means 
don't worry, the result is coming. We will contact you as soon as we get it. It's just a very slow process. However, if the pathologist sees something alarming, they pick up the phone and call me directly, usually, which means that travels quickly. Bad results are delivered by me. Not bad results, normal results will be delivered by my office MA or nurse. You may even, in the modern era, get an email or some sort of written documentation for legal purposes instead of a phone call like I have done for literally 20 years. Um, the recovery time, very rapid. It takes you 30 minutes to wake up from this procedure. Some people will have nausea, but most people will not. The nurses will tell you, be cautious what you eat when you wake up because we cannot be 100% sure that you will not have nauseousness. So try to eat a normal meal. I know you're hungry. A lot of people have exotic lists of food that they plan on eating. I would say stick to breakfast stuff. Your, your body's accustomed to going long periods of time without food and then eating a big breakfast. So Cracker Barrel or IHOP or Denny's seem to me are on the list of things to do. I, after my colonoscopy, uh, went home and, and had a couple of eggs and a piece of toast <laughs> and ate it with my husband. It was fantastic. Uh, the best breakfast I've had in a very long time. So I'm hoping the same for you. You are not allowed to drive yourself home. Uh, sedation means that you're not allowed to operate a car or heavy equipment. You should not make any important legal decisions for the rest of the day. You will be normal the next day. What could possibly go wrong with such a elaborate and crazy procedure? Uh, very little, in fact. It's a very safe procedure. It is the gold standard for colon cancer screening because it is so safe. There is a risk of bleeding from removing a polyp or infection from removing a polyp or even something called perforation of the colon. Now, knock on wood, I've never had a perforation of a colon. Uh, it can happen. I am a surgeon, and I would say three times in the last 16 years I have been asked to operate on someone whose colon was ruptured by a colonoscope. It's an extremely rare event. Um, so rare that, like I said, this procedure is the gold standard compared to any other type of cancer screening test that you can do. Having said that, after this procedure, if you're having abdominal pain, fever, bleeding, you just don't feel right, uh, pick up the phone and call us. This is the kind of thing that I need to know about after a procedure. The single most common complaint will be one of a change in bowel habits, either diarrhea or constipation. That is as a result of the bowel prep and a GI upset that will take place with normal bacteria um, after a bowel prep. And so I suggest taking a probiotic for about a month uh, after a colonoscopy, just to make sure you don't have that kind of a problem. Anyway, so, okay, that's colonoscopy in nutshell. Sh nutshell? Nutshell. <laughs> it's early in the morning. <laughs> All right, so you're going to be hungry and pooping. You're going to be drunk and silly. You're going to be farty in the recovery room. You'll go home, you'll have breakfast. 30% of you will get a phone call from us later on in regards to some form of pathology report. I send everyone home with pictures of the procedure. In fact, I send you home with the actual copy of the procedure note. I send a copy of the procedure note to your primary care doctor. We've got a new patient portal thing going. And so I'm going to start making sure that pathology reports and whatnot are sent through that. And if you have any kind of problems, our new patient portal will also have telemedicine and an emergency texting kind of app so you can get a hold of us. Uh, without a lot of red tape. Alrighty. Enjoy your bowel prep. We'll see you soon.